And good morning and welcome to Touch Space Daily. My name is Ron Foster and I'm here to touch space with you as I do every Monday through Friday and sometimes during the weekend. But this weekend I took off. I took some time off. How are you all doing? What did you do this weekend? Um, well, first of all, what is today? Today, today is Motivation Monday. It's Motivation Monday, and we are here. Hannah is the first person in the building. How you doing, Hannah? Good morning. Um, yes, today is Motivation Monday, and uh, as always, no one texts me, no one calls me until I go online. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that's about. Why is the universe that way? I don't know. Or my friends, like, punking me? I don't know. I just don't know. I just know every time I pop on here, no phone calls all day until I pop on. <laughs> What's going on, Lisa? Today is tax day. Yes, it is. It is tax day, y'all. Are you guys ready? How many of you folks do your taxes throughout the year? Um, like most business owners, they do it throughout the year. Hey, Chrissy's in the building. What's going on, Chrissy's Corner? is in the building. Omar is in the building. Good morning, sir. Oh, yes. It feels like it feels like the first day of school for some reason for me. I don't know why it feels that way, but it's been it's been a long week. Last week was so busy. Extremely busy. It was nonstop, which is a good thing. I had several new clients that I um, signed on, so I'm very happy about that. And so it was a good week. It was a good week, but an exhausting week. And thus, I said, Saturday, I'm doing nothing but house cleaning because the house was a shambles because I was so busy during the week. <laughs> so you got to take care of everything. What's going on from East Africa, from Tanzania? Ole is in the building. What's going on, Ole? How are you doing, sir? One day I'm coming to Tanzania. Omar, are you ready? Do you want to go to Tanzania? Let's go to Tanzania. Uh, do some good wildlife photography. I miss doing wildlife photography. Uh, it's nothing like going on safari and photographing beautiful wildlife. Yes, but back to New York, back to America. It's tax day. It's tax day. And Really, Lisa, and you didn't let me know? Wait, 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 wait. What's going on here? Chrissy and Ron, I was in your neighborhood last night. I got takeout from Colonia Verde. Why didn't you call? Why didn't you text? Well, you must have been on a date. Maybe you were on a date. <laughs> that may be a reason why. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to take it any further than that. <laughs> So I'm not going to go there. What's going on, Kim Kimmy? Kim Kimmy is in the building. Uh, Ole, Ole says, welcome. You are welcome. Caribou, Sanya. Yes, I want to, I miss, I miss being out in the wild. Um, uh, Shirley's in the building. What's going on, Shirley? She says, good morning to everyone. How are you guys doing? You came all the way to Clinton Hill, Fort Greene for soup. <laughs> she said the soup was delicious. The soup was delicious. Uh, I see here Hannah says, uh, good morning. Uh, she said, date, hilarious. Not. <laughs> yeah, so you know what? My, my weekend began with Friday. Friday was, after I got off with you guys on Friday, I got myself together, had to get my clothes together, and then um, head to the city for a beautiful um, luncheon for the New York Philharmonic. Uh, it was one of their uh, luncheons, and uh, it was beautiful. I was invited by my buddy Kenny, and uh, and it, we had such a great time. I mean, beautiful um, quartet. Uh, did some beautiful, um, um, you know, symphony music, but in quartet form. And uh, so some beautiful, I, I think it was we had Chopin. I think we had Beethoven. It was a couple of other artists that they, um, uh, other classical um, numbers that were there. 
Um, but what's hilarious is that I thought it was the law. I, I misread my invitation and I thought it was the big Philharmonic. So I thought I was going to go to the to Lincoln Center. So I'm rushing to Lincoln Center. I get walk the bike, rush into the building and like I'm on time. And then I go to the security guard and I say, where is the ballroom? And he was like, uh, there's no ballroom here. <laughs> and he, says, he goes, oh, the ballroom the event is on the east side. It's the same address almost, but on the east side. And I said, oh, my God. So I had to get back on the bike, ride all the way back across town, cross Central Park. And I did something I wasn't supposed to do. And I paid for it. Um, there's a cutout in between, you know, North and South. Central Park, and uh, and you, it's so that you don't have to go around Central Park to get to the east side, because Central Park is huge. Um, so I say I'm going to take the car route. What what harm could it be? I'm a I'm on a motorbike. I'm on my electric bike. It it can't be that bad, right? Let me take that little underpath that goes through cuts through the park. And Lord, it was like riding on the moon. I landed in one of the deepest craters while on that bike. I'm lucky I did not fall off the bike. But Lord knows every joint in my body felt the impact. I literally went into a crater. It had to be a foot deep. It had to be a foot and a half. I it was a crater. I said, no more. Make sure you follow road rules. <laughs> follow the road rules. No shortcuts. No shortcuts in life. I thought surely I was going down. It was, it was the angels that were holding up my bike. However, the front wheel went straight into the hole. And I'm wearing my khakis and my turtleneck, and I'm all ready for this event this eat, you know, for the for the luncheon. And I go into it and it splashes all over me. <laughs> I was like, serves you right for trying to be take the shortcut. And um, yeah, I learned my lesson. See, at 60, we're still learning lessons. No shortcuts, y'all. No shortcuts. Hey, Dirk is in the building. Mr. D. Tuggle is in the building. How are you, sir? Yeah, Omar, it was a wow moment. It was wow. I, I hit it. I that you because it was so deep that it literally stopped the bike. You know, like 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 it hit a wall, and um, I was lucky. I was re the angels were watching over me. I could have went down for the count, and there were definitely cars behind me, and uh, and there were several of these pit, these several of these huge potholes. I'm like New York City, get it together. This is inexcusable. This is one little path going all through Central Park. You can at least fill the potholes. My lower back was killing me. My knees were killing me. But I made it to the, I made it to the Philharmonic, the New York Philharmonic tea time. And it was worth it though. I, the music was wonderful. The people were great. I met some really cool people. I met this beautiful woman. She was she was she walks over to me and she says, um, she said, you remind me of my friend. You look like my friend. And I said, really? And so we have a conversation. Anyway, this woman was 90 years old, 90 years old. And she was celebrating, um, you know, I loved what the clothes she was wearing, but she was so full of life, so vibrant. And we exchanged uh, Instagram accounts, <laughs> like in Instagram accounts and um, Google accounts. So we, it was really nice to meet her and some other, and another young lady that was there. We um, shared and changed information. She was like, she wanted to, 
she has a, a, a photography as a hobby and we exchanged uh, Instagram uh, information as well. So it was really nice to be in this room with all of these wonderful, you know, you, could, you know you're in a high-end environment um, because of the way the food is served and everyone was just kind of like, you know, very, very, very pressed, very starched, but very cool. They, everyone was very nice cordial, friendly, fun, which is interesting about music is when people are gathered around music, travel, I find those two environments, people that travel, people that love music are the friendliest people on the earth. Oh, what's this? I see something. Lisa said, I just put in a $5,000. Was that a $5,000 check you're sending to Uncle Sam? I hope not. I hope not. I just put in $5,000 claim with me. Oh, you put in a $5,000 claim with New York City for pothole damage to my car. It's insane out there. The potholes are crazy. But I was glad I made it to the T. And then after that, you would think I would just end my day there. No, I went to this great restaurant in, um, right across the street from Lincoln Center because I went to um, chamber music. You know how I feel about chamber music. So I went to um, Alice on Tulia Hall. I think I, I hope I'm saying it right. And uh, so I was at Lincoln Center on Friday night. So I went from the New York Philharmonic Tea Time then had lunch with my um, dear friend, Lisa, and uh, we had a good lunch after that. And then straight to the Lincoln Center to ch um, listen to chamber music. And, uh, and that was how I ended my day. It was a beautiful Friday. I don't know about you guys, but I like to get out into the city. Most, friends, most of my friends are like, wow, you really do. You are really a New Yorker. You enjoy New York. I do go to the ballet. I do go to the Philharmonic. I do go to the Opera House. I do go to Broadway plays once in a while. I do go into restaurants, Harlem. You got to live. If you live in the, one of the greatest cities in the world, you got to live. <laughs> Almost at least I fell and I couldn't get up. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, these potholes are no joke. Uh, yes, Omar. I felt so bad for Omar this weekend. He said, Omar said, I, well, I fell into a creek Saturday and hurt my wrist. I hope it's not your shooting wrist. I hope it's not your shooting wrist, Omar. Uh, Omar went down for the count. He showed, he showed it on Instagram. I mean, he didn't actually show himself in the pit, in the pit, <laughs> let's say, in, oh my, did you get into the water? Did you fall into the water? Um, but hey, Terrence is in the building. It's so good to see you, Mr. T, good friend of mine. Uh, welcome and subscribe, stay and subscribe, be a part of the community. We gather here every day, 11 15. Um, Omar, I had to send Omar some love. I was like, Omar, you poor thing, but I understood because Friday. The night, the day before, I almost took a spill. Oh, man. There is another Lisa. No, there's only one Lisa. There's only one Lisa. There can only be one Lisa in this audience, <laughs> in this community. Lisa, it is only you. Wait, there is another Lisa? No, it's you. Uh, let's see here. And so... Anyway, let's go on to some subjects today. So yes, today is, let's talk about a couple of things and then we're gonna head on to our, to our theme today, right? Our theme today is, it is Motivation Monday. And also our theme this today is make me an instrument of peace. That's what we're gonna talk about in a little bit at the end or near the end. Um, make me an instrument of peace. I wanna share that with you guys. and. Um, so first thing out the gate this morning, first thing out the gate, Lisa said it, the tax man is call, calling. 
I don't have the hiccups, but that was I don't know what that I don't know what that was. But the tax man is calling. And um again, I will send my check out today. I will send out my stuff today. Uh I hate I hate when I have to write a check to the government. I do, but it is our obligation to make sure the government works fine. We're all obligated to writing that check. Hopefully, some of you will get a check. Um, I'm never that lucky. No, no, I'm never that lucky. <laughs> so, yes, indeed. Hey, Elise is in the building. Thank you, Elise, for a beautiful Friday sharing your wisdom with us. Oh, if you have, if you did not see Fridays on Touch Base Daily, go to History Run here on YouTube. And uh, Elise shared some real good gems with us. And it was a great conversation about Arizona and passing of these um, uh, uh, women's health bans, uh, ab abortion bans in uh, Arizona and the origins of some of these, these uh, laws. Ah, oh, Dr. Tachi's in the building. Dr. Tachi is in the building. Hey, my son is in the building. I'm late, but I'm here. Happy Monday, he says. Okay, good day all, says Dr. Tachi. Yes. Someone says, Ron, you be you be moving around on this board. I mean, I'm, you know, it's not only do I get to talk to you, but I have to kind of like shift things and click on things. But I'm doing it well. I do it well. I like doing it. It's kind of fun. This whole little platform is so much fun to hang out with you guys. Ah, uh, yes, the next you see, I mean, she's ahead of me. Lisa, Lisa is like, she's like on fire this morning. She's on fire. Dump is in court. Let's all pray the most qualified jurors are chosen. Say that again, please. Let's make sure that there's no one that's going to hang up this jury. We cannot have him be dismissed on a hung jury. We just can't. We need everybody to be fair and honest. Not out to get Trump because the, the evidence is there. No one's out to get him. He committed the crime, and so he should, what? Do the time. And um, so, yeah, so that's our next one. We uh, have, uh, have well, let me pop that out there. There we go. You look crazy there. Um, uh, did I even put that there? I, no, I'm just left that there. Okay. And um, so, also, how about Saturday's Iran's attack on Israel? Holy moly. The first time Iran has ever launched an attack on Israel. They use other people to, to raise hell against Israel. But this was, this was the first time that rockets were launched from Iranian territory towards Israel. And I was like, yo, you know, life is fragile. And Janet is always since Janet has that on her own. Whenever I talk to Janet by email, on the bottom of Janet's email says, life is fragile. Guys, life is fragile. It makes you think twice about it every day. Every day. Good morning, Anthony. Anthony Rollins in the building. Uh, but it makes you think twice. It makes you think twice about what's going on in the world. Just like that. Woke up that, I mean, just turn on the news, you know, and breaking news, Iran launches drones and missiles heading towards Israel. I was like, this is, this cannot, you, you can't make this. We are living in a dangerous time. We are living in dangerous times. We have to make sure that we love the folks around us, hug your, hug your family, love them, cherish them. These moments are precious. Every moment we have here with our friends, with our families is precious because you don't know. You just don't know. But Credit to Israel and the and the and the um, France and uh, and the U.S. and the United States and 
I think it was also England, uh, Great Britain, you want to call it GB. Um, they all got in there and stopped those missiles. And that Iron Dome that Israel has worked. It worked. 170 missiles and drones. Whoa. If every one of those drones, if every one of those missiles would have landed, would have been havoc. We would have been in a different world today. Whew. Anyways, just wanted to say that is a headline that we definitely need to keep our eyes on. And uh, hopefully it keeps us aware of what's happening in the world. I see here, what are you guys are saying about that? Okay, I see here. See all that greetings and stuff going on. Um, Lisa said, that's so crazy. I was like, we are going to war. No, America hopefully is going to stay out of this. I mean, we I, as much as we can. But it is, it is a proxy war that is going on. Um, Iran usually uses their, you know, secondary uh, countries and uh, factions to attack Israel, but they went all in themselves this time. And who knows if Israel will retaliate because Benjamin Netanyahu is probably going to attack again. You know, it's even though Biden and the uh, G7 are saying, don't do it. Don't do it. I, you know, let it go. Israel, let it go. No one was killed. Let it go. Well, there is one woman that is on critical. She was injured. But let it go. We cannot have another war. Uh, and right now, for those that don't know, that Israel is fighting a two-front war right now with Lebanon. It's not an official war, but they're launching weapons towards Israel and um, bombings and different stuff that's going on on the on the, um, on that border. And then you have the Gaza Strip. So they're already in a two-front war. They can't afford to have a third. They cannot afford to have a third. Um, uh, yeah, Chrissy says, I doubt we will stay out. Well, yeah, if Israel is attacked, we will have to intervene. Um, every day is there something new? And um, I see here, Kimmy says, the balance of the countries of uh, uh, dinner wars in other countries and becoming impossible. Um, Uh, Elise says they need to stop poking the bear. I ran over there. Uh, yeah, we, it's, 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 uh, this is crazy. We need to be aware of it though. We must be aware. That's why I share these headlines so that you can be aware. Hey, Wade Woodolph is in the building. He says, good, they say, good morning, family, connected, conscious with purpose. I like that, Wade. I like that. Keep up with your high positive frequency vibration energy from this channel. Yes, Wade, we will do so. We will do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Something else in the headlines, and then we're just going to... Well, before I go to the next headline, because this is something I want you guys to put on your, on your radar, but here's something that's a little fun. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys have seen this. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pop this up here. Um, I, I ended up Saturday when I, you know, obviously recovering from my pothole fiasco, <laughs> uh, I ended up looking at this show called Fallout. Are any of you guys familiar with this show? It's, um, uh, on Amazon, Amazon Prime and, um, guys. This was a show that was quite interesting and to me. Like at first, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna like this show. I don't think I'm going to like this show. It it was like hokey dokey, kind of crazy, but then yet scientific, yet um 
the world goes a different direction than where we went to, as in the where we are today. But it, the world is um, influenced by a, 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 um, nuclear eruptions, and um, it is quite this TV, this um this series was really good. <laughs> it's something I I, re I will recommend to you all uh, to check out Fallout. <laughs> My son says you like Fallout. Yeah, son, I did. <laughs> I, I'm almost embarrassed to say I did. It was so hokey. It was hokey dokey. I. It, it was hard to. It's hard to describe this series, but at the end of it, I have to say I enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, you know, Bryson is the man. You know, Bryson is on top of this stuff. Uh, the new show, Fallout on Prime Video, is epic new show. It really is. It was quite interesting. So if you want, if you have a Saturday or a Sunday where you don't have anything to look at and you're like, maybe I should try this and check it out, I think it's worth your time. Now, you will be thrown off on the first seat, the first episode. This is season one. And I do believe there'll be a season two. Uh, but it's really, I enjoyed it. I have to say, I enjoyed Hokey Dokey Fallout. <laughs> so, uh, man, yeah. So I just wanted to make sure you say that. Um, oh, Lisa, back to Lisa. Lisa has said, my friend says that there's something in the Bible about Israel being taken over. Do you know where that is or is it even true? Do I have to go into Bible verses? <laughs> no, but there is. Um, we, so, guys, check out Fallout. But back to Lisa. Um, there, there are scriptures in the Revelations that talks about um, that all the the that the countries in the north and countries from the West and South, I think it's all, all four sides. forgot how the exacts, I can't quote the exact, it's been so long since I read Revelations in that way. Um, but there is a Revelations that talks about Israel will be surrounded and and, and the enemies of the, of, will come against them. And yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, a, there is a section in the Bible, in Revelations that does talk about that. My son, who's the, who's the minister in the room, he may know the exact place. So anyway, get to work, son. Get to work. Get those fingers going. Revelations. I know it's in Revelations, but I don't know where. I know it's in the middle of the book. I just don't know where. Uh, Omar says it's based off a video game. Fallout is based on a video game? Ah, did not know. Interesting. Did not know. Thank you, Omar, for the geek. The, the, the Captain Nerd is in the building. Um, oh, Charlene says they filmed a lot of this series where I live. Really? I like Fallout. I hate to admit it, but I did enjoy it. <laughs> I was yelling at the TV a couple of times, like, why are you doing this? Uh Lisa says, okay, not to put you on the spot, but it's in Revelations. The chapter always scares me. Yeah, I know it's in Revelations. I just don't know where. I can't give you the exact um I can't give you the exact um Bible ver chapter and verse, but I do know it's in Revelations. I do know it's in Revelations. Oh, you didn't put me on the spot. Mm. You didn't put me on the spot. Not at all. I mean, that's what we do here. We talk. We have communication here. And if I don't know the answer, somebody here knows it. Look, you got a couple of Bible scholars in this room. Omar may know that information too. Omar, hint, hint, right? Omar knows. Omar, you got Adrian in here. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of Bible scholars in here. Um, Kimmy Kim says, interesting that I don't see Lisa's post about this. I knew we had problems about some posts not showing. Oh, I see all of Lisa's posts so far. I see everything. I do see everything here. Yeah. Okay. 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 
Yeah. So yeah, sometimes I think there's a delay or there's a glitch because some posts, yeah, this has happened once in a while. Not often. Uh, Lisa says, I meant, uh, thanks for telling me me. It's Revelations. I definitely don't know. Yeah, we definitely know it's in Revelations, but I just don't know the exact verse and chapter. Chapter and verse. Kimmy Kim says, I went through a whole chat and I don't see it. I have deleted a post after inputting. Really? Oh, this is something to... I have to figure that out. Are some some uh, comments not making it through? Okay, we'll have to check that out. We'll have to figure that out because we can't have that. Uh, oh, there's my son to the rescue. He says, I think it's Revelation 16. Give me a minute. <laughs> he's he's on it. He's on it. That's what we do here. This is the this is a it's a family affair. Yes. Ah, I love that. I love that there's look, like I said, I only facilitate this conversation, this water cooler talk we have every day. You guys are the conversation leaders. You guys navigate the conversation. You lead the conversation. Okay. So what else is in the what else? They are censoring me. <laughs> no one's censoring you, Lisa. No one's censoring you. Uh, Elise says, the book of Revelations can be scary, Lisa. Oh, yeah. The book of Revelations can be a scary book. But I, th I don't find, you know, some people find it scary. I don't find Revelation scary at all. I never really have. Um, there are, just like there are, I mean, how do I say this? Um, there are people in the world that have what's called the gift of seeing the future. Uh, that's the best, that's the basic layman way to say it. There are people in the world that have the gift of being able to see the future. And, um, so it used to freak me out. I'll never forget. Um, being raised a PK, my adopted dad was like, Hey, we had this woman that used to come by and she came, she used to come by to speak and preach at the church. She was a prophetess and she was really spot on about a lot of things. And I just, I was always fascinated by people that could see the future. It's a gift. Don't know how people are able to tap into the future, but there is a gift of people knowing how to and can see the future that we who believe in God and believe in, you know, our faith is in, in Christianity. Um, there are people that have the gift and it, not only just Christianity, but also I, I do believe in Jewish faith as well, because there's prophets and prophetess in the old Testament of the Bible. So it, it's, it's throughout history. And then you go to other cultures there are people that are, you know, in other cultures, some cultures call them witch doctors, some call them the medicine man, some call them, um, you know, seers. There are people on earth that have that ability. They have that ability to see into the future. Don't know how it's done, just know it is. It's, it's, I think it's one of the most interesting um, gifts yeah, that we get divinely. Um, Dr. Tachi says, Revelations is just meant to be a warning. That See, I see Dr. I'm with you, Dr. Tachi. I see Revelations as a warning. It, it's an insight into the future. It's an insight to what can happen. It's an insight that says, if we don't do A, B, and C, this will happen. Yeah. I, I've never had that fear, I guess, because I know where my faith is. Um, like I said, my, the, my foundation principles of my life is based in faith, right? Not because I'm perfect, but because, but I was sounding so super religious and, you know, but I believe in a perfect God. So uh, that's me. But I don't also believe is 
in throwing that on people. Right? My faith is my faith, is my personal faith, is my personal relationship. And if there are people that are atheists, that's okay too. I'm not here to make you believe. I'm only here to share love. My purpose in life is to share love, right? So uh, there are some folks, unfortunately, in the scheme of Christianity in America, which is from European thought, that they believe that they have to make people believe. And I am not of that persuasion. I do not believe it is my job to make you believe. My job is to live a life that makes you curious of why I live the way I live. And then I share the good news. There's a difference. There's a difference. Live your life, a life of love. Have mercy on people because we have mercy on us and give people lots of grace because grace has been applied to us. And people say, oh, Ron, why are you so, how can you be so happy? And how could you be so cheerful? I have bad days like everybody else. We all have bad days. I just know where my faith is. Okay, that's it. There, that, that was my pulpit moment. <laughs> <laughs> that was my pulpit moment. So I'm going to get off it. Get off. Out the, I'm getting out the pulpit. Um, Charlene says, you must pray before you read Revelation. I believe you should pray before reading anything. I really believe we need guidance, right? If you believe in divine intervention, yes. But not everybody believes in divine intervention. And people don't believe in... There's a God. Don't say you don't believe in that. I, I, I just, I'm, I, I, see, you guys always pull me down. You pull me into these conversations. <laughs> but they're worth talking about. So I'm going to go there. I have to go there. Is that um, most people in the world of Christianity, uh, especially I call it Western Christianity because it is so far from biblical Christianity, which is uh, another conversation in itself, um, is that, again, I am a believer of the red letters. And people, I know they get a kick out of me when I say, I am a believer of the red letters. I am a follower of the red letters. I read... I'm gonna say this without being mean, and I know it's gonna cause somebody to somebody to go get pissed off with me. But the the Old Testament is a beautiful book, beautiful combination of books, right? The Old Testament, the Old Testament is a what do you want to say a it is a family record of those that believe in Jesus Christ. So it believes in, it's, it's taking you down the chronological path of what happened in Israel, what happened in, you know, the history. It's giving you from the beginning to the end. It, 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 it really takes you through, right? And then you get what's called the Gospels, which is the New Testament, which is now the spreading of the good news is that now Jesus arrived, he died on the cross for our sins, and now he moves on. And then we have the good news. We don't live our lives based on the old, like regimentally, but we celebrate the grace that we have in our belief and following the teachings of Christ. And, you know, for those that are Christians in the room. But those teachings is very short. When you think about the history of the Old Testament is thousands of years, right, of history. And then the New Test Testament is hundreds, uh, well, not even a hundred years. 
As a matter of fact, most of the New Testament was written well after Christ came and went. Most of what we see in the book of the New Testament was written 40 years after. 40 years after Christ was on earth. But there was only three years to that ministry. I'm just trying to give you guys some little information here. Look, it's three years. Christ only spoke for three years. And see, this is my this is my mindset. Just going there. I like I said, I'm not trying to be religious, and I'm not trying to share my my like, to throw my belief system on you. But I always have this philosophy in life when it comes to Christianity and Christ. If a person knows they're going to die, if you knew you were going to die, you would share the most important things with your loved ones or the people you love. You would think, I'm going to give them the most important directions that they need to know, right? That's, that's, my, that's my thinking. That's my thing. If I'm going to die, if I know I'm going to die in a year, that means I'm going to make sure Adrian knows everything that he needs to know. And my family, my other family, my cousins, and all the people I need to, I'm going to let them know what's the most important things that they need to know within that year. Because I know I'm not going to be with them after. So that's why I always talk about the red letters. Those are the words that Jesus spoke in the New Testament for those that have those Bibles with the red letters. And I only focus on those words. That's how I live my life. Now, I, that's, now like I said, this is not, I, this is not, I did not plan to talk about this today, but you guys have driven it too. You know, you guys drive the conversation. My faith is in those red letters. Right? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes should not perish but have everlasting life. Right? Those things, I believe in those things. Christ was, he died, he went, he went into the grave, and then he rose, which he just celebrated Easter a couple of weeks ago. And so shall we be. I've gone to play a, prepare a place for you. So these are all the things I hold dear to me. Now, this is not to say I scrapped the rest of the Bible. I mean, I really I have my thing about the rest of the Bible. I do. I hold dearly, though, to the red letters. Because the red letters is about the expression of love, which is the good news. That's where my faith is. So, so because of that, I'm not afraid of revelations. <laughs> I am not afraid of revelation. Revelations gives you some insight into some interesting things about uh, world hist world prophecy or things that are coming. Some things have happened. Some things haven't. But at the end of the day, I really believe in a loving God that loves me and he will take care of me. He will provide. He will lead me. That's just how I live my life every day. It's very basic. I keep it very basic because this brain can't handle anything more than basic. If I just use the rule of love, I will be. I will make an impact in the world. If I just focus on loving people, if I only focus in reacting with the rule stick of love, 
I will be in a much better place. When someone insults me and then I rule and then I react through the rule of love, it's going to turn out all right. If someone does something that eh, I'm like a little questionable, I'm like, ah. but if I pause and think about love, means, you know, love means mercy, love means grace. Love will get me where I need to go. Love is my foundation. You know, I get excited when I hear you two songs that in the name of love, in the name of love, because that's what it's all about. So I guess we changed. We, we, we're still going to close out with the one thought that I, you know, our Motivation Monday thought. And it's kind of like leads right into it which I'm excited about. Well, you never know how these things are going to turn out when you're here daily. You just know, do you know, I'll let you in on a secret. Not really a secret. I really do pray before I come on these things and say, God, please direct me. Direct our conversation in this community. Let someone come in and leave blessed or leave motivated or leave encouraged or leave feeling like someone cares. Yeah, that's pretty much how I, that's what I'm here for every day. You, I mean, literally, hello. I mean, there's no money to be made coming here every day. No, it's my way of giving back to the world a little bit of grace and a little bit of mercy and a little bit of love. That's why I do this. That's why I'm all here with y'all. Because hopefully, and I think it does, I think we accomplish it. In this community, we've built some kind of love system here. We all are looking out for each other. We all care about each other. If there's nothing in life that I've ever done, I mean, I've done some things in life to help other people. But this is this this is my chapter. And this is the chapter I, I hold cherish and dear is that I get to come on here and share with you all some love. Give you some love. We talk about the society, we talk about headlines, we talk about all that stuff. But the very basis of it all is an act of love. That you are informed, that you know what's going on in the world that you know your obligations as a citizen in the world. Those are all acts of love. Okay, let's do our Motivation Monday closing. Man, I tell you, I'm, I'm really happy about you guys. So there was a couple of years ago when I was younger, in my 20s, I stumbled across a song a song that changed my life. A song, a song, believe it or not, it was a song that changed, well, not really well, it didn't it change all of my life, but it was part of, it changed my 20s. How about that? It changed the decade of my life. But I still hold dear to this. And it was based on the St. Francis letter. I, I obviously, I went to Catholic school. I was raised in a Baptist church, a Pentecostal church, a non-denominational church. I went to a Lutheran church. I am a mixed up bag of faiths. <laughs> so I, I don't have a denomination. I don't believe in them. But what I do again, believe is love. And so here, here we go. This is today's thought. This is based on the instrument of peace, lyrics, default arrangement by Isaac Wardell, Jessica Fox, Liz Weiss, and Orlando Palmer, and Paul Zach. The song is called, Make Me an Inst Lord, Make Me an Instrument of Peace. So this is my motivation Monday for you guys. The chorus says, Lord, make me an instrument of peace. An instrument of peace. Verse one, where is there hatred? Let me sow love. Where there is darkness, 
let me sow light. For in the giving me shall receive, and in the dying we're given life. Verse 2. Get this up here, verse two. Where there is sorrow, let me sow hope. Where there is doubt, let me sow faith. Where there is injury, your pardon give. Your consolation to those in pain. And then it goes back to, Lord, make me an instrument of peace. An instrument of peace. That's my Motivation Monday for you guys. Who knew that this conversation was going to go there? It just, it all fit together. You see, it this whole like moment together all came together. Didn't it all, didn't it all come together that this was our conclusion of the day? At the end of the day, and how I fell in love with this. Um, it was a song, and it was a, it was uh, the British, a British boys' choir singing this song, and it was so beautiful when I heard it, and I was like, "Holy moly, what is this song? What is this song?" Literally, I went home. And I looked it up on, I guess it was some computer or whatever back then. It was in it was probably when I was 20, 21 years old. Or maybe I went to the library and got the book. I don't know. I don't know how I how I just got the song. I went out and bought the music. I have no idea, but that song became my one of my themes in life. Lord, make me an instrument of peace. Now I picked this subject two weeks ago. But today goes to show you how all things work together for good. All things work together for good. I would have never known about the crazy stuff going on in the Middle East two weeks ago that there would be, a, you know, Iran and Israel, or that Lisa would bring up revelations. <laughs> That led the way, that led to this, this moment. Guys, as you go about your day, as you go about this week, as you go out into the world, be an instrument of peace. There's a lot of warriors out there. There's a lot of people that want to do war every day. You know, there's a lot of people out there. They don't want peace. They like war. They thrive on war. They thrive on fighting each other and argumental behavior, starting all kinds of crap and, and instigating all kinds of nonsense, talking bad about people behind their back and all kind of gossip and junk that's going on in the world. Mm-mm. That is not us. That is not us. That is definitely not me. Let us be instruments of peace every day this week, but not just every day this week, every day of our lives. Can we all agree to be instruments of peace? And I think that's how we'll end this moment, right? Instruments of peace. That's what we do. Okay, guys. That was, I. you know what? That's what happens when you pray before you come on these things. <laughs> you, you never know where you're going to end up. You just know you're going to end up right. Isn't that the beauty of life? Uh, D. Tuggle says, the Old Testament is good, is God, and the New Testament is when we sent, when he sent his son. Look at, look at that. You see, it's, it, I know, I know my audience. I know my tribe. I know my audience. I know my tribe. That's right. That's right. We are all, you're all cut from the same cloth. That's why we're here. That's why we gather together. 
Shoot. There's 17 people in this room. There was 19 or 20 people at one moment. We're here to support one another. And speaking of support, just have a couple of announcements. I'm going to do that real quick. And then we're out of here. Um, vote. Make sure you check out um, Cassandra's, which is, uh, she's part of our community, Cass Lou. Uh, check out her on Instagram. She is do, uh, has a little campaign that she's doing. She needs our vote. So make sure you go over to Instagram to check it out. Uh, go to at Cass um, C. Lou, and you make sure you do that. Also, um, we this week our uh, um, basic photography 101 class is canceled, so we will not be doing that on this Thursday for the Patreon community. So we will not be doing our class on this Thursday. I have a engagement to go to, so I will have to cancel that. We'll be doing it again in May. Okay. Also, um, for those that are in New York City next week, not this Sunday, the weekend of the 27th, we are having our RLP's Urban Photographers Meetup in Soho. Put it on the calendar. If you want information on that, just go to the link tree. If you're on Instagram, go up to the click and just click on the link. Um, but go to my meetup page. It's called RLP's Meetup uh, Photographers Meetup. And you will find our information there. And you can sign up for our meetup in Soho, which is going to be average, you know, and I said average, but people that are just starting out as photographers and people that have been photographers for decades are all gathered together and having a good time to do that. Okay. And I think we got it all. Oh, um, Lisa is running a campaign also. Make sure when you go to Instagram that you check out Lisa's campaign. She posted on her, um, or her stories check Lisa's campaign out. Um, that was also a good one there. So I just want to make sure we support one another in this community. And that's what we're about. And uh, if you are in Instagram and you have never been here before, make sure, make sure you sign subscribe, come over to our YouTube channel on YouTube, which is Touch Base Daily, and click on the subscribe and like. And if you enjoy today's I don't want to say message, but if you <laughs> but if you enjoyed today's uh, episode, if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you hit the like. Likes go a long way, and you can also share it. You can share it with your friends and family. I think today's message is a good message. Share it. Share it with someone that needs to know that we should be instruments of peace. Okay, and I think we got it all. It is time to get out of here, guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow is Tip Tuesday. We're going to do some photography tips tomorrow. So hang on with me. We're going to be talking about how to take photos of flowers and cherry blossoms, spring flowers and cherry blossoms. That's what we're talking about tomorrow in our Tip Tuesday. So come on out tomorrow. We'll be here. Same bat time, same bat channel, 11.15. Okay, guys, have a wonderful Monday. Have a wonderful week. And be instruments of peace.